Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about insulin preparations. What are the different types of insulin preparations? How they are modified in the amino acid sequence? And what are their pharmacokinetic parameters? We will discuss in this video. First of all, let us see the sites of modification within the human insulin structure. Now within this human insulin structure, particularly the B chain is a one of good site for modification. The C terminal of B chain consisting of five amino acids starting from 26 to the 30. So B26 to B30 is one good site of modification to produce various types of insulin preparations with different pharmacokinetic parameters. Because this site is not responsible for firm classical action of insulin, so it can be safely modified to produce various insulin preparations with different onset and duration of action. Similarly, another site of modification is on the A chain. So A20 amino acid can also be modified to produce few of the insulin preparations. And third site of modification is on the B chain, that is the B3 amino acid. So all these are the various sites of modification within the structure of human insulin. But the main site of modification is falling at the C terminal of B chain, which is from B26 to B30. So most of the insulin preparations are obtained by modification of amino acids at this site. So now we have different types of insulin preparations such as glycine. Glulysine, DTMR, Lispro, Digludec, Aspot. In this way, we have so many types of insulin preparations, but it is not an easy task to remember these drugs because all these preparations are not equal in their pharmacokinetics. Few are short acting, few are rapid acting, and few are long acting insulin preparations. So we may be confused to remember these insulin preparations. But still we can remember in easy way by carefully observing what is the modification within the insulin structure. So now let us discuss one by one the different types of insulin preparations and what is their modification within the structure. First let us discuss with the regular insulin. This regular insulin is also called as short acting insulin. So this is one of the limitation of this regular insulin which shows a short duration of action. Even onset of action is also 30 minutes. So when this regular insulin is given by subcutaneous route, at the site of injection, the insulin can form hexamers. These hexamers are not readily absorbed and they should be cleaved into monomers and dimers. So after some time, this is cleaved into monomers and dimers which are absorbed into the systemic circulation. So it requires some time for absorption. So there will be a delay in the onset of action. So one of the limitations of regular insulin is that this preparation should be given 30 minutes before the meal in order to show a better therapeutic action. But this reduces the patient compliance because administration of insulin before the 30 minutes of meal is not always practically possible. So when this insulin is administered just before the meal, it may not control the postprandial glucose which reduces its therapeutic efficacy. In order to minimize this limitation, different types of insulin preparations are going to be derived which are rapid acting and they can be given within 5 to 15 minutes before the meal. Now the short acting insulin can be modified to produce rapid acting insulins, intermediate acting insulins, long acting insulins and ultra long acting insulins. First of all, let us see the rapid acting insulin preparations. We have three types of insulin preparations. Insulin Aspot, Insulin Lispro, and Insulin Glulysine. Within the name, we can easily identify what is the modification in the amino acid sequence. The Insulin Aspot is derived from replacement of one of the amino acid with aspartic acid at B28 position. Similarly, in the Lispro, two amino acids are switched. One is the lysine, second one is the proline. So it is obtained from switching of lysine and proline at 29 and 28 positions. And third one is the glue lysine. Here we can clearly observe two amino acids, glutamic acid and lysine. In this insulin preparation, two amino acids are modified. So glutamic acid is added at B28 position and lysine at 
third portion of the B chain where they replace the original amino acids. So these are the three rapid acting insulin preparations. So now these rapid acting insulin preparations are having onset of action variable from 5 to 15 minutes. So these preparations can be given just 5 to 15 minutes before the meal. And the duration of action of these insulin preparations is variable from 2 to 4 hours. So these preparations can reduce the postprandial glucose with better efficacy with less hypoglycemic effect compared with regular insulin. So now it is the first one in the rapid acting insulins, insulin as part. So within the structure of insulin, this is the 28th position within the B chain. At this position, aspartic acid is going to be incorporated. Now aspartic acid can replace the proline at B28 position to produce insulin as part. So this is the fast acting insulin preparation with onset of action within 5 to 15 minutes. So just before the meal, it can be given to control postprandial glucose levels. Second one is the insulin Lispro. This is obtained from modification of amino acid sequence at B28 and 29 position. At the B28 position, proline is present and 29th position, lysine is present. When their sequence is modified, we can produce insulin Lispro. So these amino acids are switched at 28th and 29th position to produce insulin Lispro. Third one is the insulin glulysine. In this insulin preparation, we can observe two modifications. One is at the 29th position and second one is at the third position of the B chain. At the 29th position, glutamic acid is going to be replacing. So glutamic acid can replace the lysine and the third position lysine is going to replace aspartine. So again, this is a rapid acting insulin that can be given 5 to 15 minutes before the meal. Second one is the intermediate acting insulin preparations. We have one of the insulin preparation NPH insulin. So here the letter N indicates neutral, P indicates protamine and the letter H indicates the name of the scientist has a dawn. So NPH insulin is an intermediate insulin preparation. This is having an onset of action around 2 hours and the peak time can be observed from 4 to 12 hours. Duration of action is variable from 14 to 24 hours. This can be obtained by modification of insulin suspension. So here the zinc as well as protamine are going to be added to the insulin. Now when these are going to be combined with insulin, protamine can form a complex with insulin such that it can produce precipitation of insulin in fine structure. And the pH of the solution is maintained at the neutral pH. So that's what is called as neutral protamine hazard on insulin preparation. Now when this insulin preparation is given by subcutaneous route, at the site of injection it can form few of the crystals. These crystals are not easily dissolved but from these crystals insulin is slowly released resulting in the intermediate duration of action. Third one is the long acting insulin preparations. We have two types of preparations, insulin glargine and insulin DT meal. Here the glargine can be remembered in easy way. Here GL indicates glycine, arginine indicates arginine. So two amino acids are going to be modified, glycine and arginine, that is the insulin glargine. And this glargine cannot be confused with the glulysine. Glulysine is a rapid acting insulin and glargine is a long acting insulin. Here within the name large indicates it is having the large duration of action. So glargine is a long acting insulin preparation. Similarly insulin DT milk can be remembered in this way. Here DT indicates the deletion of terminal. So one of the terminal amino acid is going to be deleted in the DT milk. And another term mir indicates myristic acid, where the myristic acid is going to be added to the terminal. So the terminal amino acid is removed and myristic acid is going to be added in the insulin DT mir. So these are the two long acting insulin preparations. The insulin glargine is having an onset of action around 2 hours and duration of action is variable from 18 to 24 hours. Whereas insulin DT mir is having onset of action around 1.5 hours duration of action is around 24 hours. Both of these insulin preparations are long acting and they produce a basal release of insulin and particularly insulin DTMR will give no peak in the insulin release so it will give a basal release of 
insulin. So first one is the insulin glycine within the long acting insulin preparations. So here the amino acid sequence is going to be modified at two positions. First one at the terminal B 30th position and second one at the A 21 position. So both the terminals of A chain and B chain are going to be modified. So here at the terminal 30th position of B chain amino acid is not replaced but it is going to be added. So two arginine molecules are going to be added to the B 30th position so that the chain length is going to be increased. Now B chain is having the 32 amino acids. That's where it's having the large B chain. Now at the 21st position glycine is going to replace aspartine. So these are the modifications within the glycine. Glycine at the 21st position and arginine at the 30th position. But here arginine is not replacing. It is going to be added to the existing chain. Now the glycine is having an isoelectric point variable from 5.4 to 6.7 because of these structural modifications. Now here the pH is maintained at the acidic side within the injection which is responsible for solubilization of the insulin glycine. Now insulin is solubilized so it is having the clear appearance. Now when this insulin glycine is given by subcutaneous route at the site of injection, insulin glycine is precipitated because of neutral pH. When the pH changes from acidic side to the neutral side, the solubility is decreased and glycine is going to be precipitated. Now this insulin is not easily soluble and it is slowly released such that it can produce long duration of action. In this way, insulin glycine is designed to adjust the isolatric point to the acidic side. Next one is the insulin detimer. Insulin detimer is modified where one of the amino acid is going to be deleted. So this is the terminal amino acid at the 30th position. This is going to be deleted and a fatty acid chain is going to be added that is nothing but the myristic acid. Now the amino acid at the 30th position is removed and fatty acid is going to be added such that it produces a long acting insulin preparation. Now when this insulin detimer is given by subcutaneous route at the site of injection because of fatty acid it can bind to the albumin. So from the albumin it is slowly released and absorbed and even after absorption it binds to the albumin within the plasma from which the drug is slowly released. That's why insulin detimer is again a long acting insulin preparation. Fourth type of category is ultra acting insulin preparations. One of the preparation is insulin deglutec. So here within the structure again the terminal amino acid is going to be modified with the glutamic acid. So glutamic acid can replace the terminal amino acid. And now here glutamic acid acts as a spacer to bind with a fatty acid chain. But now this fatty acid is C16 fatty diacid. It is having a dicarboxylic acid. This dicarboxylic acid can bind to this glutamic acid to form a amide linkase and this preparation acts as ultra long acting insulin. Now when this deglutec is given by subcutaneous route at the site of injection it forms multi hexamers which are slowly released to produce long duration of action. So these are the various types of insulin preparations rapid acting, intermediate acting, long acting and ultra long acting insulin preparations. In our next video we will discuss the different types of insulin mixtures and how they are administered. So that's for today. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.